gets colder My eyes go thin as I get older Piece in pieces, bloody and bruised I feel so helpless and confused Cause I hear screaming on the left, yelling on the right I'm sitting in the middle trying to live my life Good afternoon. This is Evelyn Pringle. Welcome to Trish and Evie's Focus on the Facts. Today, Patricia Negra and I will continue to cover the takedown of the global sex trafficking networks with the latest news on the child abuse and sex trafficking scandals of Jeffrey Epstein, Nexium, and John of God. And Trish will give us the latest world news. The latest news in the Epstein scandal is the supposed suicide of Jeffrey Epstein. They claim he hung himself in his jail cell Saturday morning. There have been reports that Epstein was willing to start testifying against his rich and powerful friends, but now that will never happen. Just so happens that the day before this alleged suicide, the unsealed documents in the Epstein case revealed that in a deposition in 2016, Virginia Roberts Goofrey had asserted that Epstein and his madam, Grislaine Maxwell, had ordered her to have sex with the former New York Mexico governor, Bill Richardson, former Senator George Mitchell, Hyatt Hotels Executive Chairman Tom Pritzker, Pritzker, the late MIT professor Marvin Minsky, prominent hedge fund manager Glenn Dubin, Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz, Britain's Prince Andrew, and model scout Jean Luke Brunel. Nearly every one of these people is now out here denying Guffrey's allegations. The court documents also reveal new details about Guffrey's sexual tryst with Alan Dershowitz including times that she had sex with him in Epstein's mansions, on his jet, and that she once gave Dershowitz oral sex in the back of a limousine on the way to his house in Massachusetts while Epstein and another young woman watched. Dershowitz is out here giving interviews all over the place, trying to clear his name and claiming that he only had one massage at Epstein's mansion, but in reality, he's blackmailing all the elite. Guffrey maintains that the term massage is really a cold word for sex. On July 19th, Dershowitz discussed his relationship with Epstein in an interview with newsmakers. In that interview, Dershowitz said that hundreds of prominent people got massages at Epstein's mansions in New York, including Harvard professors, former prime ministers of countries, former leaders of Congress, celebrities, and politicians. It's more than obvious that if the elite won't protect Dershowitz now, he will reveal the names of all the hundreds of people who got these massages, code word meaning sex, at Epstein's. Also revealed in unsealed documents, Juan Alessi, Epstein's former house manager, testified that he saw probably over a hundred girls serve Epstein at his Palm Beach home over 10 years. After each encounter, Alessi said he would clean up the home's upstairs massage room. In multiple occasions, he said he found vibrators or sex toys and put them in Maxwell's closet because he knew that that's where they were kept, along with the shiny black costume. Tony Figueroa, Guffrey's ex-boyfriend, also testified that Guffrey said she participated in threesomes with Maxwell and Epstein, usually involving strap-on dildos. He says that Maxwell also asked him to find girls for Epstein. The court documents also revealed that Epstein ordered books about sex leads with slaves on Amazon, including such titles as SM101, A Realistic Introduction, and Slavecraft, Roadmaps for Erotic Servitude, and Training with Miss Abernathy, a workbook for erotic slaves and their owners. Last week in the Epstein scandal, the headline included reports that Epstein wanted to start a baby ranch and flood humanity with his DNA, and that he wanted to inseminate 20 women at at a time at his ranch in New Mexico, according to scientists who talked to the New York Times. Epstein told scientists and businessmen about his goals for a baby ranch beginning in the early 2000s, the Times reported. One transhumanist also told the Times that Epstein was also interested in cryogenics and that he wanted to have his head and penis frozen. Well, that horrific story fits in with the John of God scandal. The cult leader known as John of God has been accused of running a sex slave farm and selling babies to the highest bidder on the black market, and he was arrested in December 2018. Brazilian activist Sabrina Bittencourt claimed that John of God ran a baby trafficking operation in which children were farmed in Brazil before being sold to childless couples around the world for as much as $40,000 each. She claims that the young girls were held captive in remote farms 
where they were forced to produce babies and the women were murdered after 10 years of giving birth. John of God gained international fame in 2010 when Oprah Winfrey visited his retreat to interview him for a talk show, and Bill Clinton and supermodel Naomi Campbell are among those rumored to have visited him. He was arrested a week after over 600 allegations piled up against him in what prosecutors say could be the worst serial crimes case in Brazil's history. Among the hundreds of allegations against him, his own daughter, Dalva Texiera, said that under the pretense of mystical treatments, her own father abused and raped her between the ages of 10 and 14. And finally, the latest news about the Nexium child sex trafficking cult is that the childhood education programs, known as Rainbow Cultural Gardens, that was created by convicted Nexium leader Keith Ranieri in 2006, is still operating in France, Guatemala, and the United Kingdom. So I'll bring Trish on now, and we'll start the show by first having her give us the latest world news on Iran, Israel, and Venezuela, and then we'll get to the battle against the pedophiles and the perverts. Welcome to the show, Trish. Hi, Evelyn. Great summary. There's so much. I mean, what a what an incredible development over the weekend. It's just um, oh. there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to pick apart there. It seems. But um, on the international front, we're seeing, I mean, I, I think one of the most important things, you know, I'll remind people is that it's important to remember that, you know, what you were just talking about, Evelyn, that's going on with Jeffrey Epstein is directly tied to all this other warfare and um, misery around the world. These are all, this is the same system um, that's behind both. So, you know, for example, um, in Syria, there's, you know, this is, this is driven by the, you know, Zionist political agenda, this Pentagon plan to invade seven nations in five years, and this is to destabilize the region in order to provide Israel um, dominance there. And the, re- the, the point behind that being um, to control trade routes from China west into the, through the Mideast into Eastern Europe and Western Europe, as well as Russia, because Russia trades has a significant uh, trade um, history with China and Iran both. So this is also the the involvement of the U.S. is also around the idea that, you know, disrupting this trade between China, Russia and Iran will weaken them and therefore, um, you know, alternatively strengthen the U.S.'s position. So with the U.S., you know, we know sponsored the terrorists in uh, Syria and are behind, you know, half a million deaths already in Syria since our invasion. And um, one of the things that's happened is that when Russia came to the aid of Syria, I think it was like two years ago, three years ago now, the tide turned. And so Syria and Russia have made significant progress in driving out the terrorists and thwarting them, but up until this point, they had been somewhat tentative, and one of the things that had kept happening was the U.S. would repeatedly ask for ceasefires because they would claim to be worried about civilians, but these were always just ploys to give the terrorists an opportunity to retrench the U.S., to resupply them, and to uh, reorganize them. And so at one point about a year ago, uh, after major defeats in East Aleppo, for example, the U.S. Uh, moved and, and uh, relocated tens of thousands of terrorists to the Idlib area. And if you look on a map, Idlib is in the northwest, you know, near the Mediterranean coast, and um, is, is a key area through which this trade um, blockade that the U.S. is trying to build, uh, that, that's a big piece of that route. So um, in the last few days, though, or in, in the last few months, it seems that Syria has recognized that, you know, whenever the U.S. asks for one of these ceasefires, 
they always violate it every single time I have ever seen the U.S. ask for a ceasefire. And I know I haven't seen all of them. They happen a lot. But they violate it every single time. And I think right. that, that Syria is finally now to the point where they're like, okay, uh, this, this last campaign that I was watching over the, the past few days, they gave um, the terrorists 24 hours to move out. And um, they then, and they agreed to a ceasefire until for several more days um, to allow them to retreat. Well, of course, the 24 hours passed and they did not move. So um, instead of continuing to abide the ceasefire after the terrorists violated it, which is always what happened. Um, the Syrian army was like, okay, we gave you 24 hours. You've shown that you're not going to move, so we're coming in. And they've done an amazing job in um, just, they, they'll, they just, they bomb them. They don't, you know, they're, they don't, they're not capturing anyone. <laughs> they don't have any, you know, these guys are, they have landmines everywhere. They had a suicide um, tank with like a ton of explosives explosives in them and in a resident you know in a um residential area that will kill a lot of people it was an incredible explosion when the syrian arab army detonated it to dis- you know get rid of it so right. um they're killing dozens of these terrorists they're destroying the equipment they're making tremendous headway and this is really the focal point on which the um the success of the Syrian Arab army rests uh, because, you know, Idlib is, is along with um, the Golan Heights in the south, it's, it's in that same vertical route, but, and it's part of the same um, trade route that the U.S. and Israel want to control, but, um, but Idlib is really the, the big test for them um, to then recapture the Golan Heights from Israel. And the other thing that seems to have changed in addition to the fact that the Syrian Arab army is now much more deliberate and um, systematic in their progression, they're not being as nearly as timid from what I can tell. Um, so the, the other thing is that um, the, the tide has really turned in the Golan Heights against uh, Israel's occupation there and attempt to annex it. And so um, this, you know, with a success in Idlib will all pave the way for a success in the Golan Heights. So I, things are moving forward. The bottom line is that this is all progressing um, in a positive way. But at the same time, I don't want to um, minimize the civilian casualties that continue to occur. Remember, there are all these refugee camps that the U.S. refuses to allow people to leave. They are starving. There are tens of thousands of Syrians trapped in these refugee camps who are, want to get home and cannot by, because of the U.S. So, um, you know, there is a real crisis continuing there, but um, the tide has turned in favor of Syria with, with um, very definitively. So the other thing is, um, you know, Syria has had the support of China, and China and the U.S. are also, you know, now back and forth. The U.S. keeps escalating this, these trade wars. Donald Trump imposed additional tariffs just days before uh, he was scheduled to meet with Xi Jinping on a trade agreement. Nothing came of it, of course. Um, and so China continues to work very actively with Russia to establish non-U.S. dollar trade and um, financial mechanisms they, that will allow them to circumvent the monopolies that the U.S. has held on um, the, you know, electronic um, transactions and then also uh, the currency hegemony has, has made trade for these other countries more difficult. But now given Russia and China are as big as they are, they've been actively building their gold reserves. Again, China came in um, ahead, you know, at the very front along with Russia 
for purchases of gold just this year. So um, they, you know, they're very, very serious about uh, de- independence from Western uh, financial terrorism. And one of the, right. you know, so so this continues to escalate with China. The U.S is being more aggressive militarily as well in that region. The U.S. is also, uh, over the last few days, a U.S. consul was caught meeting with one of the um, leaders of the protest movement in Hong Kong. And this is um, in the wake of uh, China's officials Stating, you know, they knew the U.S. was interfering and they, they, you know, were like, stay out of our affairs. You have no right to interfere. And, and of course, the U.S. denied interfering. And then, well, here we go. We got this um, uh, on film that they were meeting together. And, 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 and the U.S. official would have no business meeting with one of these protest leaders. So um, we know for a fact that the U.S. is monkeying with China in that respect. Um, This relates to India because, you know, um, they are now, things have escalated significantly with Pakistan over Kashmir. And this is all a region where Pakistan, China, and India's borders meet. And this is an area that the U.S. and Western allies want to keep in chaos, just like they do in the northern of Syria and Iraq, because it allows them to conduct their illicit trade of drugs, weapons, children, and organs. So you can see, again, there's this very distinct area that is um, afflicted with violence that is all um, led by Western allied uh, interests. And so the, Israel has, you know, it's been obvious their attempts to escalate the conflict. Now India has deployed troops. They're brutally um, cracking down on protesters in Kashmir. Uh, Pakistan has uh, severed, they've both severed political or um diplomatic relations in just the last couple of days. Um, So, uh, and, and again, you know, on that border there where Pakistan meets with China, for example, is the China Pakistan economic corridor. That is again, something the U S is bound and determined to block because it will, they want to control the trade. They want to hem in, um, China and this economic corridor with Pakistan gives China access to the um, Gulf, the the Gulf below the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, across to the African continent. Again, a key piece of this Belt and Road Initiative trade, you know, route that everybody's fighting over in the region. So um, that's. China, I mean, the, the Huawei, like they're, they're still, you know, the U.S. continues to um, terrorize individuals, Chinese individuals as well, um, as they're doing with Iran by sanctioning, you know, individuals and, you know, officials and others. And this is all illegal. This is all <laughs> illegal what the U.S. is doing. It's incredible. They also seized, um, you know, all of this ties back to Venezuela, um, who is also fighting U.S. hegemony. There have been escalating sanctions against Venezuela. The Bank of England stole over a billion dollars worth of bullion already. The U.S. has seized Venezuela's oil assets, um, they uh, are blocking payment for food, medicine, and medical supplies. Um, they, including like 300,000 doses of insulin. And then they just seized a cargo ship with 25 tons of food. This is what the U.S. is doing to Venezuela. Wow. An estimated 40,000 Venezuelans have died already as a result of U.S. economic terrorism. These are weapons. They are weapons of mass destruction. They are killing thousands of people, and they are war crimes that are being committed by U.S. officials. 
And, um, the, you know, remember, there's the Koch brothers. Venezuela is now um, in response to in, in efforts to gain independence from the U.S., is working more closely with China and Russia. China is, um, they just ma- entered an agreement to, um, for more oil, to, to pump and refine more oil in Venezuela. So, um, you know, the, and, and Venezuela is also working to diversify its economy beyond oil, which is what it has used historically to pay for, you know, education, um, uh, health care, and all these other public needs. So um, since the U.S. sanctions, it's, they now are forced to find an alternative. So thankfully, China and Russia are there to fill the void, and they're, you know, and they can do it very adequately, and they do it um, with a record of, you know, entering into these agreements in good faith. So, you know, Maduro has every reason to expect that negotiations that he has with these other leaders will yield something productive, as opposed to, you know, with the U.S., they make agreements in order to break them. They are never serious about keeping agreements. And in fact, I think they make them simply to gather the intelligence and dupe, you know, psychologically, you know, manipulate the um, other parties. So... Um, the, so that's, I think, uh, with the, on the international front, um, and then, you know, just to, not to let people forget that, um, all this stuff with Jeffrey Epstein ties right back to Israel, same with these wars, tie, and, and the trade wars as, as much as the military wars tie back to Israel. And Netanyahu is in the midst of the political fight of his life where he's facing a second um, emergency election in less than a year because he cannot pull together a coalition in the Knesset in order to conduct the business of the state. So um, he, it came up as a result that, in fact, the, a former prime minister, Ehud Barak, who is running against Netanyahu for prime minister in this emergency election, is directly tied to Jeffrey Epstein himself. So it just kind of fills in, uh, you know, it, it makes it really very obvious that these these um, connections are in no way accidental. So, um, and and, and you, I know um, that we'll get into a lot of that covering the Epstein and Nexium and John of God cases. Sure, George Webb says that. Uh that Epstein, you know, that that we're all, you know, rattling on about he's a pedophile and all this, but he says that Epstein's role in this goes much deeper than this. He says that he's been involved in flying these illegal weapons around and that he also trains pilots. Right. Well, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell is a helicopter pilot yeah. herself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what they do with a lot of these, these girls, weapons. remember? Remember, we've 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 seen and heard from a lot of these whistleblowers who talk about how, like with the MK Ultra training, they're you know these super soldiers. They try to get them when they're young, and these girls they're used as spies. So they're they're trained in ways so that they can elicit information. They can um, you know persuade others into um, certain behaviors and things like that, and. So um, they're also trained in in order to help facilitate facilitate these operations, and that's what also what was going on like with all these wars. The wars are cover yep. for the shipment of all these drugs and children and organs and all that other stuff. Yeah, these are rat lines, but the rat lines include all this trafficking arms, illegal trafficking arms, and drugs and children. And organs. Yes. Yes. And, and so uh, Epstein's involved much deeper in all, all this in, in trafficking arms. Well, flying for these red lines. Oh, yeah. No, there is no question. There was one of the women that um, he, he, I think he, like, she was trafficked out of Kosovo, I believe, at the age of maybe 12 or something by him. And he kept her for himself. 
And by the age of 20 or something, I think, she had her pilot's license, and he paid for it. And, you know, it, it left me uh, to conclude that based on, you know, everything else we know about how these operations work, she, that was her role. She was, do, she was trained to do what Jeffrey Epstein was doing. Right, right. That, you know, that's they, probably they why Epstein was such skills. good friends with uh, Prince Andrew, too. Isn't he the one? He's the arms dealer for the U.K., isn't he? Yes. Prince, Prince yes, Andrew? he sure is. Yes. So they're operating these illegal arms trade all over the globe and running this pedophile networks on the side. Yep. Well, and now, then, um, remember, you know, <clears throat> they traffic these children from those areas where they're bringing the weapons, too. Right. So right. Um, they just bring a plane load of them back whenever yep. they... Yep, and they did this, the same thing down in Haiti, you know, yep. trafficking the children down there through Epstein's Island. I mean, this is... Yep. I mean, when I got up and I seen that headline, Epstein dead, well, I wasn't surprised, yeah. but it was just like, here we go, here we go. Yep. And then the exact very next day, after these names are released. Yep. They no. want and this definitely, governor. I, I am absolutely convinced, Evelyn, that the goal, there, it was no accident they were released on a Friday, right? We know they do this all right. the time, especially before a um, holiday weekend. And then the next day, this story of him committing suicide and then um, nobody's talking about what was in the court documents. They're all talking about his supposed suicide. And I think that's exactly what the goal was. They had to have this story of him dying in order for it to be an adequate distraction from what was actually released. Right. And they're all out here now. They're all out and got the same talking points as Alan Dershowitz. I've never met that girl. I've never seen her. I don't know who she is. <laughs> you know, the same talking points that Dershowitz is out there. That and well, and of course, I was reading the um, I was reading the documents from the that case. It was a um, it was a defamation case against um, Ghislaine Maxwell, and I was reading those. And Ghislaine Maxwell tries to say in her in her paperwork that she wasn't even around Epstein's mansion down there in the early 2000s um, and when all this was going oh, on. Wow. But, of course, they, they got the, now they got all the um, notepads and stuff, and there she is with all kinds of messages on the notepads coming in for her and her taking messages during this time period that she says she don't – she's never spent time with, with Ghislaine – with um, – Virginia Roberts, you know, and Virginia Roberts yeah. says that she's flown on that plane. I think it's 23 times with Gisley Maxwell there. And the records show, you know, the, the pilot records show they have to put initials and stuff for who's there. And, and the um, GH or GM is always on there. And, and the yeah. same thing that Virginia is on these airplanes, you know. Well, and the other thing, now, Evelyn. They don't, they don't know her and they never seen her and they wouldn't even recognize her. <laughs> Well, she remembers. Well, the, yeah, well, it, it, I'm sure they know she can, you know, just give enough details for it to be incriminating. But, you know, the bottom line is that these same police that somehow let Jeffrey Epstein commit suicide in jail, and yet there's no video. It's like, right. isn't that amazing how yet isn't again... It? We've got no video, but at this, but um, you know, in addition to getting us to stop, to not talk about who is implicated in those court documents, you know, having him quote unquote die um, gets us to stop. <laughs> to figure, oh well, there goes the case. You know, it all ends here. Nothing we can do now. At least he's gone, kind of thing. I think that's, you know, they're trying to prep the public for that because no one, you know, the MSM coverage, it's all like no alleged suicide, no questions about, you know, how on earth he could have committed suicide and nobody noticed. And, um, and you know, other in, inconsistencies in the way it's being reported. You know, these guys are like not even questioning it. It's just like, oh, he's gone. Oh, we'll never know. And then the other thing, Evelyn, is that 
you know, in addition to now, you know, supposedly the only real witness is dead, so we'll never know kind of thing. Um, you know, how long ago was it? Not two, three weeks before Jeffrey Epstein's dramatic arrest. He, the NYPD, again, lets him somehow sell off the one piece of evidence that would have the DNA from all these motherfuckers and the girl on it. Yeah. The Lolita Express. That would have been the one thing that could have conclusively tied those people to those girls. And they just somehow let it slip through their hands. Right. Right. And, and people, I mean, I didn't know that much about the jails and all this, but, but other inmates are saying it's impo- it would have been impossible for him to commit suicide in there. I mean, they don't yeah. have like their, their sheets and stuff are made of a, a, a paper, paper type um, yeah. fabric, you know, that it would never hold him. He weighed 200 pounds. It would, yeah. you would never hold him to hang, hang yourself. And they said that there's nothing in there to hang yourself from in these jail cells. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it's impossible. No, it's so, ludicrous. I mean, yeah, but now no, no cameras. I mean, they spy on our every move. I mean, you know, the computers, yeah. they even got us spying on us in our house. But now, again, yeah. there's no yeah, video camera. Yeah, miraculously. Oh, every right. single time. Just like when Seth Rich was murdered and when the Las Vegas shooter and, you know, 9-11. Oh, all of these incidences. Somehow the cameras just are never fucking working. But well, wasn't it How just at, at that Walmart too that they said the cameras didn't yes. work? Or was that yes. Yes. Yeah. El Paso. In Walmart. It's, it's you so know. absurd. And I they know where somebody said, somebody said, you know, like in Walmart that the cameras don't work. They said, steal it. Steal it. Stick a deodorant and try walking out the door and they'll have the yeah. sports teams on you in Walmart. Yes. <laughs> but then they say no, the cameras true. didn't work. When this All of a sudden, place. the facial recognition just, like, dies. Oh, wow. What do you know? Just like the frickin' NASA losing the original footage of the most historic events on, in human history. And then pretending they lost the technology that allowed us to get to the moon. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's just, and, and, you know, same thing. It's like two airplanes and three buildings managed to go down. We, they've right. gotten away with this shit for so long, Evelyn. <laughs> it's no wonder yeah. they expect to continue being able to. Yeah. Now, this uh, former governor, Bill Richardson, now he's involved in the Genie Energy. Um, yes, deal, isn't he? he is. Yep. Yes, mm-hmm. he is. He's one of the, so, he's on the board of directors of Genie Energy, which is stealing the oil out of the Golan Heights. And this was Israel. Um, granted this license illegally in 2013 or 14. Um, and then, with, you know, this also speaks to why Israel is hell-bent on um, annexing the Golan Heights. Right, right. Well, I'm so angry that, um, you know, that this case isn't going to die. And I'm so angry that, that his alleged conspirators have not been charged in this case. That yep. Kathleen Maxwell, man... I mean, she wasn't just the procurator. She participated yep. in all this filth with these girls. Strap on dildos yes. and the whole works, man. This is so disgusting. Yep. And then walking around free. Yep. You know, and, and like I talked Manning about that other time. Like Chelsea I talked about Manning that other and, time. Yeah, it's, in, it's all the, only the whistleblowers and journalists go to prison. Never the criminals. Never. Well, I know, and, and so many of the w- women have said that, that um, Ghislaine Maxwell raped them, too, you know? Yeah. But they just let these walk around free. And like I said that other time, um, this other week, there was that article where the school teacher that had raped a, a 13-year-old boy in the sixth grade, she got sentenced to 20 years in prison. And you got people like Epstein and Maxwell walking around here, raped hundreds all over the globe yeah. and walking around yep. free. Yeah, so so ridiculous. Yeah, no, and and well, Claire Bronfman, Claire Bronfman, you just you mentioned the you know yes. Rainbow Cultural Garden. This is not a preschool; it's a child grooming and trafficking operation. They are yep. deliberately 
um, you know, inflicting trauma on these preschoolers in order to um, groom them for sex trafficking to wealthy and powerful people. And this is Claire Bronfman brought up on child sex trafficking charges had pumped a hundred million dollars into the Nexium operation, and yet she fucking walked. Yeah. She didn't. None of those charges stuck. No, and she was. And if her sister Claire Brofman is supposedly still running, her sister Claire Brofman's over there. She's supposedly still running these uh, Rainbow Garden childhood Incredible. education programs. Yeah, yeah. And why wasn't she brought she back walked. here? So this stuff is still going to continue on. Yep. Uh, Yeah, that's the thing. And so the one good thing I'll say is that I've noticed people are like, you know, first of all, no one believes the story, which I think is great that, you know, people are like, oh, come on. You know, even if he is dead, somebody killed him. There is no way he committed suicide. It just did not happen. And, and the public is not buying it, which I love. <clears throat> they, they're more likely to think that he was murdered than that he committed suicide, which is, you know, even, I, I'm of the belief that he's still alive, but that's okay. I mean, no one believes the suicide story. But the yeah. other thing that I saw right away was that people are like, okay, they are clearly trying to shut this story down. We cannot let it die. You know, nope. our, our lives depend on it and the, our future depends on it. And um, Whitney Webb from Mint Press News has done this amazing series on Jeffrey Epstein and his connections to the Jewish mafia, going back generations with Roy Cohn and Meyer Lansky. And then she she traces that back to um, the current administration. Jake Morphonius also does a really great job of pointing out how all these people have been connected for decades. They are not just randomly connected now. They, their, their connections go back decades, and they were very deliberate, and, and there were no accident whatsoever. So um, I, if you, you know... Anybody who's really serious about trying to understand this stuff should read Whitney um, Webb's series in Mint, Pre- Mint Press News because it, it lays it all out in a way that I've never seen done before, and it's some of the best reporting I've ever seen. And so, um, so it's a must read. And, and even if you don't get to read through all of it, share it with people and urge them to read it too because it's just that good. It's, it's something everyone should see. Yeah, Jason Burmas had her on his video. I think it was yesterday. I was watching it. Boy, she really goes. Yes, gives the whole, the whole um, how they're all connected, and they have yes, been for so even, many years. So many years. Yes, and she even connects the dots between Meyer Lansky's mafia, it, getting yeah. thrown out of Cuba by Castro. Okay. That's if that was yeah. the Batista dictatorship was backed up by Meyer Lansky's mafia, which I had no idea. And then if you look at the JFK files, there's that one document from an informant on uh, the day before Kennedy was assassinated. He, this inform this um, informant uh, stated that. They had their new backers were Jews. Meyer Lansky was a Jew and that they were anti-Castro. Um, this was an anti-Castro Cuban giving the statement, but he said our new backers are Jews. And as soon as they, we or they take care of Kennedy, that's the quote from this guy's statement. And really? um, that was the day before Kennedy was assassinated. And they did not, wow. that was the FBI, did not supply that information to the Secret Service until four days after Kennedy's assassination. Wow. Oh, this, this country is so evil. So evil. Yeah, well, well did, and, you see the, did you see the uh, pictures that uh, the New York Post had put out of when they were wheeling uh, Epstein into the hospital, when he was in the hospital there in New York? That is I mean, those pictures bullshit. is so ridiculous. Yeah. That is not Epstein. 
Well, and, on them and whoever it is has an awful lot of color to their face if they're freaking dead. You don't stand. <laughs> there were no visible. If he had hanged himself, he would have had visible injuries on him. And typically, um, when when you're hanged, your head swells, like your face swells up from edema. And oh, so he showed, okay. he's like, there were absolutely no signs that something like that happened to whoever that was. Well, now they're saying that the autopsy has been completed, but, uh, but they're, they, oh, the examiner, Barbara Sampson, said her determination is pending further, pending further information. And they had celebrity pathologist, Dr. Michael Baden, was enlisted by Epstein's representative to observe the autopsy. Well, this is awful fishy because uh, Baden, that's uh, who Dershowitz had uh, testify in the O.J. Simpson trial, too. So they're bringing in this no. guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, oh sure. wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. They're covering all their bases. Sure. And this Over is what everything. they do every time. Like for 9-11, Michael Chertoff oversaw the investigation. Dual Israeli citizen. He um, he oversaw the destruction of all the evidence. That was his job. And you see it happen all the time. They destroy the evidence. And, sure. and the other thing, you know, for people who are like, oh, they couldn't have swapped him out. I mean, you know, the, the CIA has told us that they can do this. Uh, I mean, they, they do it in the movies all the time. That's predictive programming. They're letting you know what they're doing. They actually do have the means and motive by, to have carried this off because, you know, Epstein was such a – we know for a fact he was an intel asset – because Alexander Acosta told us he was. Court documents yeah. confirm he was an intel asset for the FBI when he agreed to cooperate with them. That's in the court documents. These are, this is not speculation. So the, he, he being that closely tied, they would have had, you know, the, the motive to protect him or, or to protect themselves by pulling off a faked death and just getting him out of the picture. Right. Because right. they already got rid of the most important piece of evidence, which was that airplane. Yeah. Well, did you see that, uh, that Trump was twittering out um, yes. about, about the Clintons <laughs> being involved in this? Well, he, t- he twittered yeah. a, a link to a breaking news site, which claimed that on sealed court documents revealed the top Democrats, including Bill Clinton, took private trips to Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island. The president also retweeted a post from Terrence C. Williams, an actor and comedian who was known for his conservative views. He tweeted, died of suicide on 24-7 suicide watch. Yeah, right. How does that happen? Epstein had former information on Bill Clinton, and now he's dead. I see Trump body count trending, but we know who did this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other There's thing, a lot you know, of part of what I see there with happening, the body count. A, a conspiracy well, that, theory is even scrawled XOXO Hillary plus Bill on the sidewalk outside of Epstein's mansion in, in New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, Evelyn, I think something that's important to notice, though, is that this is being politicized. And I think that would have been part of the whole point of faking his death or, or, you know, even if he is dead, killing him off would have left everybody arguing over, you know, who did it as opposed to what was, you know, why he would have been killed. And so, you know, it makes it a partisan issue. And, um, and, and it, it just, again, it distracts from the key point of what was going on this guy was trafficking children to the most wealthy and powerful people in the world and he did it for decades yep and that's what and we're not talking about it and the mainstream media probably can't stand these documents coming out because they're in there too that that Humphrey says that um that trump never took part in sex with any of those underage girls and she also said that the only reason she thought he was um was a friend of Guffrey's, I mean, a friend of Epstein's was because Epstein told her he was a friend of hers. She never seen him uh, have sex with any underage girls, she says. 
Well, did you see on mainstream media that, um, who was it, uh, Joe Scarborough from MSNBC? Like, they're literally now saying that somehow Russia was involved. I kid you, know, you not. Russia did this. <laughs> yeah. That would it, be it, it's yeah. just beyond belief. Yeah. yeah. And this is the thing. This is just part of those documents. This, this was just the first probe of documents that came out. There was going to be many more coming out right but but the victims attorneys say that it is not going to end here they think it is but it's not and they have to go after his co-conspirators they have to yes yes no we why that you know maxwell isn't behind bars and beyond me yeah well we just saw claire bronfman walked i mean we see we see how the system is set up to work and it is not a system designed to punish billionaires it's it's a system designed to protect them so i'm sure that these document release was a big disappointment to well they could right and left you know that um jason Burmis always said we shouldn't keep talking about right and left it should be right or wrong yeah exactly you know these people yes. that are out here fighting not to have these documents come out well my god Anybody knows why. Right. They don't want them coming out. They fought so long to fight them coming out. Yeah. Why on earth would you do that? <laughs> well, we Except to avoid being embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. But that Dershowitz man, he's the worst of them all. He's the worst of them all. He's, you know, he's been out here for weeks. Anybody that would put him on, he's been out here for weeks say, saying this. If he don't even know her, he don't even know... Virginia, he wouldn't even recognize her and all this stuff. This is so ridiculous. He's a professional liar. We know oh this from him. God. He's a scumbag. And he, you know, he was advocating 20 years ago or 30 years ago to eliminate um, statutory rape for girls, you know, under right. 15 and older. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's really came out, too, over the last uh, few weeks of, of, of um of Dershowitz always out there promoting for a younger sex age, a younger age of consent yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, why would he want this? Why would he want this? And this stuff, well, and it's, him, he, go ahead. I was just going to say, and especially for someone who claims, you know, you know, innocence, I, I, like it, it just, it, it, for anyone else, it would be kind of a big, uh, you know, additional data point to plot that the guy openly advocated for this to be legal, what he is now accused of doing. So, (laughs) I mean, he, he shows his own motive to do it. Well, I think that this jail is going to have some explaining to do because all of these things that were supposed to protect him in jail didn't happen. Yeah. You know, the I mean, guards didn't check. They said that they were let off because they were going to do maintenance on the cells and all this kind of stuff. It's all crazy explanations that they're giving yeah. as to why that this could happen in that jail. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like it, with all these incidences, they never – it's just like with the DNC server. And, and so – um, I, I know I, you know, I'm really not at all surprised that that happened right when I talked about the DNC server, because those were the stories that were suspended on my medium account, right as all this stuff was breaking. And it was around, you know, the Seth Rich and J- Julian Assange and the Podesta emails and the sex trafficking of children and so forth. So, you know, it's just like, it's as preposterous that Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide in jail as it is that, you know, the, that two airplanes took down the, tw- you know, three towers and that the NASA lost their, you know, technology for getting to the moon to and use that as an explanation for why we haven't gone back. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Right. Well, supposedly, um, Attorney General Barr has ordered an investigation by the FBI and by the Inspector General's office. So how do you think well, we that'll go? Well, we saw what they did. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You know, yeah, look right. at what they did with the DNC server. I mean, my God. 
It's like, you know, they totally don't care that they look like totally incompetent fools. But as long as they get away with it, that's all they care about. And and they they cover crimes. They do not expose them. Right. He's one of their informants. Court documents. He's an informant for the FBI, for heaven's sake. Yeah, they're going to investigate him real objectively. Right. I said, oh, yeah, the same FBI that's been investigating the Russian hoax for the last three years. He does all this crap. What a joke. What a joke. Give me a break. You know, and all the time the mainstream media will talk about these lawsuits and stuff, and they'll say that the case was settled. But they don't say who it was settled in. You know, for like the case is settled for Virginia Roberts. You know, right? That if she if she won the case, if they settled it out of court, well, that's as much as admitting the proof of the allegations. Yep. You're not going to su- you're yep. not going to submit a settlement for a, a page of allegations that aren't true. You're going to fight them. But the mainstream yep. media will say, "Oh yeah, that case was settled," but they won't say it was settled in whose favor. Settled and they against always Epstein brush- and Maxwell. And they always brush over the fact that these were children, too. Yes. Yes. Calling them prostitutes. They're not, there's no such thing as an underage prostitute. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this, now this not, case against that, uh, that uh, what the heck's their name now? This, um, well, that Dubin. His name's Dubin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sex with, you know, his wife, his wife used to go with Epstein. Right. Did you know that? I was yeah, really yeah, yeah. shocked by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. And so it says that she really helped him come back out after he was arrested and everything, come back out into society. How sweet of her. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's what you want to do for someone happened. like that. Yeah. So, One of the but, interesting p- things that I found out. Um, in, as I was reading up for this today, was that, um, in fact, it was Prince Andrew's wife, ex-wife Sarah Ferguson that introduced him to um, Good Time Ghislaine. Really? As he was known. Yes. Huh. I didn't know that. I, 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 no, she's the I one that uh, Jeffrey Epstein gave her a lot of money to, uh, Sarah Ferguson. Yep. Prince Andrew's wife, 60000 or something like that to help her pay off her debts or something like this, back when all this was going on. And then it was afterwards that uh, that Prince Andrew was out there marching around right on main streets in New York with Epstein after he got out of jail there. Yep. They don't, they don't care. No. Nope. You know, they, they just throw it in our faces and everybody would know it. You know, but this yep. this bit about this Dubin, this is bizarre because Glenn Dubin's his name and Eva Anderson Dubin is her name. And they had a fifteen year old girl supposedly showed up at their house and their um their uh butler interviewed her and they had her down at the island and they did horrible things to her and then she didn't even know how she got to the Dubin's house from the island, she's telling this butler. That uh yeah. she was, was she the on one the that island got her- and it's that she said no to sex, and then they took her passport and, and threatened yeah. the, the, her if she would talk about this. And, of course, they deny all the allegations that none of this took place. These people are making all this up. Yeah. You know, even, even his though, butler at his house. Well, that's the thing. Is The other thing is she, Virginia has a picture of herself at that age with Prince Andrew with his arm around her. And um, Gisling, in the UK. whatever the hell her name is, in the background, this is at Gisling's home. So right. her, that gives her a lot of credibility. If she's in the home with the two people, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't get any more credible than that. No, no. And supposedly one of the excursions with Prince Andrew was down at uh, Epstein's Island, and there was like 11 or 12 underage girls in an orgy. That he participated Jesus. in. This, this is the kind of stuff that has gone on. And I don't care if he's dead or not. We are going to stop this. Yeah. Yeah. Him being it's dead don't mean us. nothing to me. Well, that's the thing is it's up to us 
to not let the story die, which is exactly what they're trying to do. Whatever happened to Jeffrey Epstein, the goal was to get us all to stop talking about it. And we can't let that happen. Well, yeah. And you noticed even in my summary, how little I said about that damn fake suicide. It was like two sentences. Yes. You know, that, yeah. uh, that, 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 right, that it's totally to distract us. And, I mean, it couldn't be any more obvious than within 24 hours after the name's being released that uh, he's supposed yes. to kill himself. Yeah, right. Yes. Well, he's not the only one that can uh, back these. You know, all these girls are saying, too, that they're saying that they had sex with these people. So, well, and there's no and video is- of the suicide? I mean, give me a break. Give me <laughs> a break. Yeah. Well, that Dershowitz, he's such a rotten bastard, I'll tell you. He's out there. Yeah. He's even trying to pressure the Pulitzer Prizes to shut down the Miami Herald for its investigation reporting on the Epstein case. This is how awful he is. Yeah. I mean, that was excellent reporting by the Miami Herald. And that Julie, is it Julie Brown? Is that her name? I don't know. I forget now. But um, excellent reporting. They absolutely deserve deserve an award for that reporting. Yeah. Well, our time's up, Miss uh, Patricia. So thank it's you very great, much Evelyn. for coming on. Thank and you. we will keep up on this and keep everybody posted next week. See you next so, week. Okay. Goodbye, people. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. Bloody and bruised. I feel so helpless and confused. Cause I hear screaming on a left.